Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Lindsay Humphreys and I am the Program Director for Junior Achievement of New Mexico. Thank you all so much for attending our virtual career speaker series today. This program is open to JA students across New Mexico and we highlight business professionals, entrepreneurs, and innovative thinkers from a variety of different industries. Each featured speaker will share details about their education, their job, and their career journey. Before we get started, here are a few meeting um, etiquette reminders. This recording will be posted onto our YouTube channel for anyone who was unable to attend today. So feel free to send that YouTube link to anyone in your network after this um, meeting. And for our records, if all the kiddos and teachers that are on the call could type their first and last name into the chat box, it is where the little dialog box like looks like, um, has mine has little lines in it and a notification blurb. So if you could just type your first and last name in there and tell us who um, your first and last name, and then if you are a teacher, how many students are on the call with you. And then during the speaker's presentation, please make sure that all of your mics are muted. And if you have questions during the presentation, just write them down or put them into the chat box. And then we will address those questions in the Q&A portion of the event. So today we are so excited to welcome Serena Perez, VP of Marketing and Business Development for Loveless Health, Health Systems. So I'm gonna jump over and share my screen. Serena, the floor is yours. Great, thank you so much, Lindsay. And thank you guys so much for inviting me to be a part of this um, presentation. I'm so excited to share a little bit about my journey and how I got here and just answer any questions that you guys might have. So how I got here, I never probably thought that I would um, be in healthcare marketing, definitely growing up in, you know, middle school, high school, I just, that was a concept that was kind of foreign to me. Um, but I, I grew up in El Paso, Texas, which is about four hours south of Albuquerque. Um, also never thought I would be in Albuquerque, but I'll talk to you a little bit about, about that journey. Um, and I started off, um, you can go on to the next slide there, Lindsay. I started off um, in music. And music kind of, um, as you can see in the next slide, very young. I, I remember in the fifth grade, I had an opportunity to either, you one of your electives is art or orchestra. And I was so tired of art. I had been doing art, you know, all through my elementary school years. So I said, I'm gonna do orchestra and I'm not gonna play the violin or viola. I'm gonna play the cello because it's different and it's big. And I just remember carting that thing back and forth to school every single day and just really falling in love with the cello. Um, and it just really became part of of who I am today, but also it helped me with my education and, and with that journey. So I grew up, I went on to high school, um, onto the next slide, and I, and I went to Burgess High School in El Paso, and I wanted to be involved in everything. I was very uh, active in wanting to meet people, very social. I loved my friends, I loved my family, I loved doing a lot of different activities such as sports and I continued with my music because I really felt like it was a great way to meet so many different people and it was a great way for me to learn so much about so many different things. Um, and it's it's interesting because it's it's all things that you look back on of how to work well with others, how to not win all the time. Because as you guys know, in sports and in life, you don't win all the time. And you learn how to deal with um, defeat. And you also learn how to juggle a lot of different activities and a lot of different things. Because when you do those extracurricular activities, such as music and sports, you have to learn how to juggle that with your schoolwork and with your family life and with your friends. So I, I look back on those days and those years and really am grateful and thankful for that because I think in a lot of ways it's made me, you know, who I am today. Um, and, you know, with the music, I was able to go to New Mexico State University um, when I was um, going to college and I went there as my undergrad. And I remember when I was in high school and I remember when I was getting ready to go to college, all I wanted to do was get far away from 
from where I grew up and get far away from my family because don't we all, we're just, we're so excited to, to move on with that journey. And you hear all these other, you know, students that I was going to school with and all my friends and they got into all these really great schools outside of El Paso. And a lot of them also stayed there in El Paso and went to UTEP. But I was like, no, I, I really want to experience something different and I really want to go away. And I remember at one point going to Notre Dame, my dad was a huge Notre Dame fan and I really wanted to go to Notre Dame more than anything. Everybody always talked about Notre Dame and they talked about how great that college was and just all the fun things that that you that that college does and and it was just this traditional college and university that is up on this pedestal again growing up thinking that was where i needed to go and wanted to go so i applied there and i got in there and i remember it was going to be so much money and my mom and dad you know my mom was a teacher for 35 years my dad sold life and health insurance so they basically told me in not so many words, you are welcome to go wherever you want to go, but there's only so much we can do to help you. And and that was a life lesson for me because I remember my dad telling me, you're getting a full scholarship to go to New Mexico State University with music. And he told me one plus one is two at New Mexico State, just like it is at Notre Dame. And I thought, you know what, that is so true. And think about all of the you know, I'll still be able to have a fun experience. I'll still be able to get a little bit farther away from home, but not have all that debt just hanging over my head when I graduate. And I remember thinking, especially now, I am just so grateful I went in that direction. So music, again, really helped me get that opportunity um, to go to New Mexico State and also to to um, meet new people and meet new new friends. And I wasn't that far away from home, but I was still far enough away where I could, I could be uh, um, on my own. And I remember when my parents dropped me off and walked out of my dorm room, I was kind of sad. And I was like, what did I do? Oh my gosh, I'm, good thing I didn't go super far away because now I know I can hop in a car and get there whenever I need to, because it is a, a, a huge step. But um, so from New Mexico State, I um, I ended up interning actually when I was there at Memorial Medical Center, which is a hospital. I I knew I wanted money, and that was something I knew I wanted even when I was growing up in El Paso when I was young. I sold blow pops for money. I um, washed dogs. I remember I got a I got a job working at a, a kennel washing dogs, and I legit lasted one day. <laughs> I was like this is not for me. I don't want to get wet. I don't want to <laughs> squeeze poop out of dogs. <laughs> and I just remember thinking, this is not for me. I can't do this job. I need fast, easy money. So like I said, I, I sold blow pops. And then I actually got a, a got a job. Some of my friends in high school worked at Steak and Nail, which was a really fancy restaurant back in my day. <laughs> and it was a steakhouse. And I was like, ooh, that sounds so awesome. I want to work there. I want to wear a bow tie and a cummerbund. And I want to um, seat people at fancy tables. So I did that. And then I ended up moving up and getting a job as a waitress there. And then even when I moved on to Las Cruces and went to college, I worked waiting tables there. And it was a great way to learn customer service. It was a great way to learn patience. And again, those experiences helped me um, to where I am today. And it was really interesting because in college that you can also get um, jobs as interns, um, either working at the university, which I also did do. They're called work study jobs. So there in the music department, I, um, I worked there in the music office and helped make copies and I helped um, some of the professors. I just knew inside me, I didn't want to just go to school. I knew I had to make money. I wanted money. Money got you things. I loved shopping. I loved going out to eat. I loved being with my friends. And I just knew my parents were not in a position to be able to send me money all the time. And I also didn't want to be able to ask them for money all the time. So, and, and deep down, I think I knew that again, I was going to be learning life lessons that were going to help me in the future. Um, and I'm glad that I did that. And then ultimately, I, I found an internship working at the hospital there in Las Cruces. And that was my first introduction to healthcare marketing. I had been a, 
a candy striper when I when I was young and I just loved the hospital environment. Um, I had so much respect for doctors and nurses. And I remember, um, you know, people in my family being ill and sick and, and going to the hospital and getting the help that they needed. I knew that hospitals were where life started with birth. And I knew that hospitals were where life sometimes ended. But I also knew fabulous things happened in hospitals like um, medicine and science and um, just research and so many different exciting things could happen in a hospital. But I also knew I didn't necessarily want to be a nurse or a doctor. So when I was able to intern and do marketing, I found a different side of healthcare, not only helping the patients, but educating patients, educating the community, um, working with the employees that work in the hospital and supporting them. And even though it wasn't doing all of the things that they did by caring for patients at the bedside, there was there was a lot that you can do in healthcare and marketing and all the fun events that we're able to plan and events for the community. And not only that, sponsoring things like Junior Achievement and helping the community organizations thrive and succeed and bringing our healthcare voice to them is something I really wanted to do. And when I graduated college, I moved on to um, uh, someone that I worked with. I never thought, I, I, I thought, again, when I graduated college, I want to go somewhere further. I don't want to be in New Mexico. But a gentleman that I worked with said, have you ever thought about continuing, you know, working in healthcare marketing? He says, I know some people in Albuquerque. And I thought, Albuquerque? I've never even been to Albuquerque. I've heard of Albuquerque. So I came out here. I met with, um, at the time, it was Cimarron Health Plan, which, moved, which consequently um, became um, uh, Molina Healthcare. And that's where I started my my career after college was working at Cimarron. Again, it's those connections and it was those people that I met um, and those relationships that I built that helped me um, get this job here in, in Albuquerque. And I remember being so young and so silly still, graduating college, but still thinking I knew everything, right? And one thing that I can tell you guys is once you get to either where you are today or once you get into a job, one thing I wanna make sure that you guys understand is mistakes happen and we have to learn from our mistakes and, and understand that there's consequences to them. I remember a specific situation where I was, I was getting all these emails and, and I was a part of, a, of an organization called American Marketing Association at the time here in Albuquerque. And being so silly and so stupid and I, wanted to just be funny with one of my coworkers. And I thought I was sending an email about this particular organization to them. And it did not go to just him. It went to the entire list serve, an entire email that uh, of this organization. I was mortified. Luckily, it wasn't a horrible comment, but it was a silly one nonetheless, and one that I'm not proud of that I did. I was so embarrassed. I thought I had, um, I thought I was going to lose my job um, because not only was was the speaker, um, you know, just a prominent person in Albuquerque, the group that he was representing was a member of Cimarron, was part of our, like from a business perspective, it was just a horrible, horrible, stupid mistake. And um, you just have to be so mindful. Luckily, my boss at the time, um, he understood and I apologized. I was embarrassed. I didn't want to lose his trust. I clearly disappointed him. I disappointed myself. And it was that lesson. I think it's sometimes it's these painful lessons that teach you to be mindful and they teach you, you know, to watch what you're doing and, and just, and to know that unless you want everybody to see it, don't put it in an email and don't leave it on a voicemail message and don't put it on social media because social media is so, so much bigger and larger, of course, than what it was back then 20 years ago, guys. And so, but even then there were, there were mistakes that I've learned. And I think every valuable lesson in life has been from a mistake that I've, that I've, um, you know, been able to kind of overcome and learn from and, and realize that again, there's consequences to our decisions that we make. So just 
be mindful about that and just learn and grow from those. And a couple of things I want to leave you with are nothing happens if you don't start. If we, you know, I love to run and I know a lot of people say, I'm so slow at running. How do you run? Well, a mile is a mile, whether you run it in 10 minutes, seven minutes or 20 minutes. The ones who don't get it done are the ones that stay at home on the couch. And if there's a dream or something you want to do or something you want to accomplish or something you even want to try in life, just do it. Nothing happens if you don't start. And I also say this, know when to pick your battles. Um, there's a, I love Kenny Rogers and I know you guys probably don't know who he is, but um, he's a really uh, fun country singer. And there is one song that I keep in the back of my head as cheesy as it is, it's no one to hold them, no one to fold them. And that is so true in life and in any decision that you make. Know when to pick your battles with your mom, with your dad, with your significant others, with your friends, family, and with your coworkers and your bosses, because don't sweat the small stuff um, and be kind um, and be gentle and be courteous to anybody. Never think that you're better than anybody else. That's also one thing I've learned because I've washed dogs and I have gotten to where I am today. And, and the career that I have today and, and my accomplishments were all because of decisions that I made and things that I tried. Um, and I was able to get my degree. I was able, because of my job in healthcare marketing and, and where I was, I was able to get my master's at UNM. So it's just really something that's been important to me and that has helped me grow, whether I lived in El Paso, Las Cruces, or here in Albuquerque. And I think these are life lessons and things we can take no matter what career we go into, um, no matter where we live. So again, I thank you so much for letting me share my story and my journey. Um, um, and I'm, I'm helpful or I'm happy to open it up to questions and I hope that I'm helpful to you guys. Excellent. Thank you so much, Serena. Like Serena said, we are going to open it up to questions. I do have some that students submitted before the um, registration or when the registration opened. But first, let's see if anybody wants to unmute and ask a question. If you would like to, this is the time to do that or you can type it into the chat box. Okay, so the first question was, how did I choose Loveless over any other hospital? And you know, again, it was, I started off at Cimarron Health Plan and Cimarron was a, um, a health insurance company it, um, back then. And so as a health insurance company, um, people who are part of your health insurance company have access to go to certain hospitals, right? Like if you've got Presbyterian insurance, you would go to Presbyterian. If you have Blue Cross, you now come to Loveless. So it was similar to that. And we worked really closely with Loveless because that's where people could, could get their insurance. So I remembered learning so much about healthcare um, marketing by starting off in, in health insurance. And I wanted to get back into that hospital environment. Remember that I was talking about that I did when I was a candy striper and when I interned at Memorial Medical Center in Las Cruces. So I started meeting people through my relationships at Cimarron and found out there was a marketing coordinator position available at Loveless. So that's how I was able to switch over to Loveless. It wasn't because I liked one hospital over another, it's because that's where my connections were. So it's a lot of success in life is who you know. <laughs> and don't forget that, that kind of goes back to don't burn your bridges where we live in a small community where everybody knows everybody. So that was kind of how I picked Loveless. Excellent. Let's go to one of the questions from the registration. So the question is, if I am only in high school, how can I find out my skills and the many careers that my skills might fit in? So I think high school is a way in which you can um, explore and that's your time to learn. And, and again, just try it all. Try anything that piques your interest. Like I said, I sticked with music or I stuck with music and I, and I tried different types of sports and things. I was never good at sports. I was never good at one thing or another. Like I liked it all, but I never excelled in one thing or another, even with the cello guys, I'm going to be honest. 
I wasn't this amazing cello player, but I worked hard and I practiced and nothing comes easy to me. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But I will say that that's when you can learn and grow. And, and even when I did cello and I moved into college and I thought I'm going to get a, my major in, in cello and, and in music, I didn't. I ended up actually switching music to my minor because it wasn't until college that I started to take different classes and meet different people that I realized there's other things out there that I really also love. So my advice to you on that is, what do you love to do? You all have such an advantage over me back then in that you've got the internet and so much more happens on the internet and so much more research can be done. So my suggestion is if there's something you like or that you're interested in or even a class, talk with your teachers, talk with your counselors, um, talk with your parents or anybody that's close to your family. If they're in a career that you, it, you even have a little bit of interest in, Google it, check it out. Um, YouTube it, see what all is out there when it comes to that particular industry or, or job. So there is a question in our chat from Everett. And he would like to know what other jobs are there at the hospital that aren't doctors or nurses? Great question. So we've worked with, with Junior Achievement on this, um, uh, the Groundhog Week that, that Junior Achievement has. And it's a way in which students can learn what else is available. And there are IT jobs. So if you love computers, if you want to help people like me and the doctors and the nurses turn their computers on, that's great. It also does everything from our electronic medical records. So much now is done with technology. So no more paper anymore for uh, writing medical notes and giving it to the patient. Everything is now done electronically. So that's an option. Cleaning the rooms, making the food. There's people that can only eat certain certain foods when they're sick or when they're pregnant or if they have certain um, illnesses, but they still need to eat, right? So it's that culinary. If you love cooking and you love that culinary, we've got to feed the doctors, nurses, employees, and patients. So that's something to keep in mind. And also that environmental services, um, cleaning the rooms, making sure there's no more infections in the rooms and that everything is nice and clean, working with security maintenance, um, HR, if you love people and human resources and you want to hire people and you want to put them in great, in great jobs, HR, marketing, advertising, um, the list goes on and on with the number of different careers you can go into outside of, of being a doctor or a nurse. Excellent. If there's anyone who would like to unmute or I'll keep going through the questions from the registrations. Okay, so the next question is, um, what are some schools that offer good business programs? Well, UNM, the Anderson School of Business is a, a great school. So if you all are able to stay here in New Mexico and get the lottery scholarship, again, no debt, that's awesome. Um, I, would, I would suggest looking local at what's here. Um, so UNM has a great program, New Mexico State does as well. Um, and work again with your teachers and counselors and, and other people close to you in your life of where did they go to school and what did they love about it? Um, research online. But I will say for me, I was so anxious to look outside of of my own area. And I'm glad that I ended up doing that because I was able to know and learn that there's so many great things just in our backyard. So I would probably start here and then explore out from there. Excellent. Um, the next question, you kind of touched on it in your presentation, but what made you choose this marketing specifically? So I, again, I just, I really loved when I did my internship, it really helped me understand all of the great things that happen within a hospital and how I could, how I could be, how I could help impact that and how I can be a part of that without having to be a doctor or a nurse. 
not only that, I'm, I'm able to work with such a great team, my staff, and I'm able to help coach and groom people. And I just love that. I love teaching other people about this career. And I love being able to educate patients in our community, our community itself, and, um, and working with so many people and impacting so many lives. The hard part, though, is is we put all these great messages out when it comes to healthcare. And healthcare is a challenge because we're not Disneyland. No one wants to come to the hospital. No one wants to go to the doctor's office. So it's it's tricky and it's it challenges me. And it and I really love that about healthcare marketing because um you are marketing something that not everybody wants. It's not a fun car. It's not a fun trip. It's not a cruise. It's not a toy. Like, it's serious. And so you have to be very mindful with how you market and how you get those messages out. And so for me, it's also been a huge challenge in that regard. Excellent. Anybody want to unmute? We have one more question from the registrations. Um, in your role, did you need to get a business license? In my role, I did not have to get a business license, but I encourage you all to um, get your um, get as much information about the career, the job that you want to go into, because in some jobs, you do need certain certifications, and you do need um, if you want to. Um, move up in a company. Sometimes they require that you have a degree um, or an advanced degree. And one thing I can say is get as much education certifications that you possibly can, because not only will it help you continue to grow and learn, no one can take that away from you. No one can take your education and your knowledge and and everything that you've built away from you. So always just remember that. Excellent. If no one else has any questions, we will wrap up. Give it one more second to see if anyone brave wants to ask a question. Lindsay, there's a, one more question in the chat. Um, oh, okay. um, was your degree in marketing? No, my well, my undergrad was actually in communication studies. Um, so I started off in communication studies, which again has really lend itself and um, to the marketing and business world. And then when I went on for my master's, I started off um, getting my master's in communication and marketing. But I, for me, when I was going through the program, I realized this is so much like undergraduate. I, I've, I feel like I've already learned this and touched on this. I have no desire myself to to learn more about that topic. So I, I went on to do um, organizational development, which again, really was fascinating to me to learn how organizations are built, how they grow, how they train their staff, how processes and why processes are in place for people to be um, successful in their jobs and for companies to be successful. So that was the direction I went in for my master's. But undergraduate, it was communication studies. Thank you, Patricia. Excellent. So we're going to wrap up. So thank you all so much, students, for being on the call. Thank you, Serena. We hope that you enjoyed today's program. But before we log off, just a couple of announcements. Following this presentation, all of the kiddos that are on the call, you're going to receive a post-program survey. And by completing the survey, you'll be entered into a drawing to win a Dion's gift card. And a huge thank you to Dion's who has uh, graciously donated and partnered with Junior Achievement to give some of our lucky survey respondents um, gift cards to these after these events. And teachers, if you're on the call, please make sure to send the link to the students so that they can be entered in as well. If you complete the survey by Friday, you'll be entered into the drawing and we'll decide our winners on Monday. So please make sure that you um, fill out that survey. And then lastly, keep an eye out for your emails for our next week's registration. We have Tim Lyons joining us. Tim is the C Species Survival Officer for Aquatics at the New Mexico Bioparks Society. 
So he'll be a fun one to see. So we hope you guys all join us next one next time. And thank you so much, Serena, for your time and your honesty during this presentation. Thank you guys so much. It's been such fun and a pleasure. Thank you so much. We'll see you all next week.